Welcome to Lyons Township High School AP Physics. Uh, today we got an example involving angular momentum and its conservation. Uh, so here's a situation. You might want to pause the video and uh, copy this stuff down. Go ahead. All right, you're good. All right, uh, so we've got a merry-go-round and we're looking at this from a bird's eye view. So we're like in a helicopter looking down onto the merry-go-round. The merry-go-round's got a mass big M, radius R. Kid, mass little m, is running tangent to the edge of the merry-go-round and the kid's going to jump on the merry-go-round and the merry-go-round will begin to rotate. And um, we're going to determine four things and we're going to do this both in terms of variables and numbers. So we're going to figure out what's the starting, the initial angular momentum of the kid, the final angular momentum of our system, the final angular velocity of the kid merry-go-round system when the kid jumps on and they both, the kid and the merry-go-round, begin rotating together. And then finally, what fraction of the total energy, was, mechanical energy, was lost in this collision? Because we have an inelastic collision and we know that in inelastic collisions you lose some energy. So we're going to figure out what fraction of the energy is lost, okay? All right, so um, first the angular momentum of the kid before the kid collides with the merry-go-round. Well, looking down on this, he is a point mass, and um, he has angular momentum with respect to the center of the merry-go-round. And the way I, I tell my students is, imagine if you were running and you reached out and grabbed that would say it's an axis or like a pole sticking out of the ground. Well, if you forget about the merry-go-round, if you were just a kid and you were running and you reached out and grabbed that pole, well, then you'd spin around that pole. So you have angular momentum with respect to the center of the merry-go-round. Now, by the way, on a side note, if you were running up here directly toward the center of the merry-go-round, well, then you would have zero angular momentum with respect to the center of the merry-go-round because you'd have, no, you'd have no radius then. Um, and if you think about it, if you're running right toward the center of the merry-go-round and jumped on, the merry-go-round's not going to spin. So um, that's an that's a anecdotal um, display of not having angular momentum versus if you jump on here, you do have angular momentum and the merry-go-round will spin. Okay? So what's the angular momentum of the kid before the collision? Well, he's a point mass, or he's behaving like a point mass. And angular momentum for a point mass is simply R cross P, okay? And cross simply means it's like multiply, but it's how much of the momentum of the kid is perpendicular to the radius, or how much of the radius is perpendicular to the momentum of the kid. So the kid's line of momentum is here, and the easiest way for, for me to do this is to say, okay, he's got a line of momentum, what's the perpendicular radius to that? Well, that would be there. And that's just simply capital R, okay? Now, you could pick a different point to study. You could pick, like, let's say here. And if I gave you that radius and the angle there, or some other data to find the angle there, you could find out how much of the momentum is perpendicular to that radius. But when you all was said and done and did the calculation, you're just going to get R times momentum. Now, um, this equals R cross mv, momentum is mv, and we have all those numbers. So by the way, in, in variable terms, you'd be done. Uh, that would be your answer. But we'll go ahead and throw numbers in. So r is 1.5, the mass of the kid is 50, and his velocity is 4, and that's 201 and a half of that. You get 300, and the units would be um, kilograms. You've got that. You've got a meters and a meters per second, so meters squared per second. So that'd be your initial angular momentum of the kid before they jump on the merry-go-round. Now, what's the angular momentum of the system after the kid jumps on the merry-go-round? Well, <clears throat> just like linear momentum is conserved if the net force on your system is zero, angular momentum is conserved about any point through which the net torque on the system is zero. And it turns out we have such a point the center of the merry-go-round. When the kid hits the merry-go-round, the merry-go-round is going to hit the kid back. Uh, that's going to be an equal and opposite force. That's Newton's third law. So for the kid merry-go-round system, those two forces cancel. 
Now it turns out there would be another horizontal force in the system. When that kid jumps on the merry-go-round, this axis is going to push this way on the merry-go-round briefly um, to keep the merry-go-round in place. However, that force on this axis causes zero torque about this axis. So, um, you know, so if you're measuring your momentum, uh, angular momentum about that point, the net torque on the system is zero. Therefore, angular momentum is going to be conserved. So this L naught will also be L final. This is L final of your system. And that will be 300 and same units, kilogram meters squared per second. Now again, that's only if we're measuring momentum, angle momentum about the center of the merry-go-round. You pick anywhere else and all bets are off, okay? But for the center of merry-go-round, we're good. And that's what the merry-go-round is spinning around, so that's a, that's a good point to use. Now, uh, the next question is, what is the angular velocity of the kid merry-go-round system once the kid hops on and they're both rotating together? So first of all, hopefully you'll recognize that both the kid and the merry-go-round have the same angular velocity. They're both rotating together. Um, and what is that? Well, we're going to use conservation of angular momentum. So we're going to say L naught equals L final. Okay. So L naught was our RMV. L final, well, now it's an object spinning. It's not a point mass anymore. It's a, it's a merry-go-round spinning with a kid on it. So for that, we use I omega. And then we're trying to find omega final. So moment of inertia times angular velocity. Now, the moment of inertia is going to be that of the merry-go-round plus the kid, OK? So we have an RMV equals I for a merry-go-round, which is basically a disk spinning in a circle. The moment of inertia of that is 1 half, that's the big M, R squared. Plus you have the kid going in a circle. The kid is still behaving like a point mass. For a point mass, the moment of inertia is just m r squared. So you have a, a little m r squared here, and then omega final, OK? Um, now, if you look at this, one of your r's would cancel out, OK? And then other than that, um, we can factor a big r out if you want, and you get omega final. So omega final, in terms of the variables, would be little mv over r times 1 half big M plus little m. Uh, now, we'll go ahead and plug, plug numbers into that. Um, so omega final is little m, which was 50. V was 4 over the radius, which is 1 half. And we got 1 half. The mass of the merry-go-round was 200. Plus, we have the mass of the kid, which is 50. Um, so doing the math here, you get 200 over, let's see, 150 times 1 half, that's 150 plus 75, 225, which is 8 ninths, or 0.8 repeating radians per second. Okay. Um, now, knowing that 1 rev is about 2 pi radians, or about 6 radians per uh, second, um, this would be it would take him about seven seconds to do one full lap, give or take. Okay, so the merry-go-round is not moving all that fast right now. Now, the last question was, what fraction of our energy was lost? Okay, um, so we want fraction lost, and we'll do this in terms of variables first, and you're going to do a little math here, and then we'll also put some numbers in and get an actual fraction. Okay, so fraction lost is we need the final kinetic energy minus the starting kinetic energy over the starting kinetic energy. So in other words, we have the amount lost divided by the starting. That will give us the fraction lost. Okay. Well, kinetic energy starting is very simple. It was just a kid running. So he had uh, translational kinetic energy. That's just 1 half mv squared, 1 half little mv squared. Okay. For kinetic energy final, well, we've got to write an expression for that. Um, I'll start with that down here. So kinetic energy final, for a rotating object, we have a merry-go-round kid rotating. It's 1 half i omega squared. So that's 1 half i, which is our 1 half big M plus little m, um, oh, times r squared. 
Uh oh, does I? Oh, I put that down. Okay. So that. Okay. You know, and I'll rewrite that. I uh, better be careful with that. So one half big M R squared plus little m r squared. That was our moment of inertia times omega squared. Now, the expression we got for that was this. Okay. So I'm going to take all that and I'm going to square it. And just to keep it simple, to make it look like this, I'll put the r back in there. Okay. Um, so this and this will look similar. Okay. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to do one more math trick. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by actually by r squared. Okay. So this will be r m v up here, and this will be the r squared will be here and here. So if we do that, we get I got to square everything up there. So you're going to have an r squared, a little m squared, and a v squared. In the bottom, if I I'm, again, I multiplied both top and bottom by r, so that's r squared. I put that in there, and then I got to square it. So you're going to have this whole thing, one half big M r squared plus little m r squared. That whole thing is squared. Okay. Now uh, we're going to do some simplifying here. So for instance, I got two of these here and one of those there, so they'll partially cancel. Okay. And then um, that half, I'll just put a 2 down there. So the kinetic energy final, and I'll write that here, and I do apologize again, a little clustered here. Uh, we've got big R squared, little m squared, v squared, all over 2 times this expression. 1 half big M R squared plus little m R squared. Okay. That is our final kinetic energy that I'm going to stick in right there to find our fraction lost. Okay, so putting that there, you get big R squared, little m squared, v squared, all over 2 times 1 half big M R squared plus little m R squared minus the starting kinetic energy, which is simply the kid. That's your 1 half little m v squared all over um, the starting kinetic energy, which is the kid again, 1 half little m v squared. Okay. We've got to reduce this. Now, thankfully, that's not as hard as it looks. <laughs> All right, so what can we get out of here? Well, I got an r squared here and an r squared in both these terms there, goner. Okay. I got a v squared here, here, and here, goner. Okay. I got a 1 half here, that's 1 over 2, half there and a half there, goners. All right. Finally, I've got an m, an m, and an m. I can get rid of 1m in all those terms. If I do that, I'll write what I have left. Okay, so if I divide that by m, I've got little m over 1 half big M minus little m. <laughs> oh, wait, there's a plus here. <laughs> That's our mess up. Okay, even I make algebraic mistakes sometimes. Yeah, it's supposed to be a plus. That's where we messed up. So that's a plus, that's a plus, aha. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so anyway, uh, now we got it. M minus little m, gone. We got a half big M in, in the numerator. In the denominator, we have a half big M plus little m. And uh, just to make it simple, oh, and that's a negative. You got a negative out front. That's because we're losing energy, so you get a fraction lost. Um, I'll double everything to make it simple. So you got negative big M over big M plus two little m's, okay? So that's your algebraic expression for the fraction of the kinetic energy that was lost when the kid jumped on the merry-go-round. If you want to throw numbers in there, you can. We got negative 200 over 200 plus 2 times 50, which is negative 200 over 300, which is negative 2 thirds. So what that means is when the kid jumps on the merry-go-round, that system lost two-thirds of its kinetic energy, okay? Um, so that was an example involving uh, conservation of angular momentum and finding, uh, based on that, finding how much or what percent or what fraction of your energy is lost also involved the quick algebra goof, right, uh, which we fixed. So um, I hope that was helpful, and uh, thank you very much.